Hey, it's Sofa Free here. Picture this. You're driving along, car starts to sound like it's going to stall. You depress the clutch, tap on the accelerator, brings it back up. A bit later on, does exactly the same thing. Mill light comes up. Fuck. So you do what any self-reliant man would do. You'd reach for one of these, and then you'd reach for one of these, and you'd find out what's going on with your car. When it comes to these, don't cheap out on them. This one is a LE Link, costs about 25 to 30 quid. Considering what you're plugging it into is uh, considerably more expensive and much more of a pain in the ass if it was to go wrong. I've had some cheaper ones of these. I had a Wi-Fi one, and I could smell it burning and making funny smells uh, whilst it was plugged in, and immediately pulled it out. Luckily, it didn't affect the car or anything, but that goes to show. Like this is more expensive but well worth the money i'll put a link in the bottom so i then read the dtc code and it came out as a p0016 so i'll google it when googling it it is a crank cam sensor correlation on bank one now bank one don't really worry about it if it was a v engine it'll be bank one and bank two because it's a inline straight engine it's just a bank one that's irrelevant unless you've got a v engine and then you're trying to work out which cam's slightly out basically this means that the engine is slightly retarded or advanced i'd probably say retarded more than anything when things tend to stretch they tend to get behind like um and fall backwards now the reason I didn't know about it in the first place is because this is a two trigger code. So what that means is it has to, the event has to happen the first time and then the car might be like, hmm, well, hmm. Let's just let that one go till the second time. And then the second time it'll be like, wait, like this is something wrong. We need to get this shit checked out. So some of the symptoms of this could be car not or refusing to start. I didn't have that problem. It could have a rough idle. Kind of had a bit of a rough idle. I would say that the rough idling was more to do with the throttle body which I'm going to give a good clean out later on. But it has kind of appeared to have got a bit better since doing the timing change. So could have been a little bit of a sign if you've got a bit of rough idle. Also another sign is going to be performance loss. Now obviously because if the timing is slightly retarded or advanced, your valves are going to be slightly opening and closing before it might be relaying the message to the uh, ECU to fire a piston when it's completely out of sync. These chains only need to be stretched a very, very small amount. Considering how fast the engine's spinning around and how quickly these sensors are catching the data, um, it's, it is only by a little bit. Later on when we get part two of this problem, you'll see that the chain has actually stretched. So the other thing to look out for is obviously the economy of the vehicle, but often the little amount that that has sort of changed is gonna be very minor. You probably wouldn't notice that if you was driving it hard one day, and the second day you weren't driving it as hard, then you probably wouldn't even notice like the difference. I didn't, I didn't notice any difference in the car, like performance or the economical factor just appeared to be the same. So the other thing to watch out for is obviously a noisy engine. Like if a chain has jumped to tooth and it's uh, then sloppy in some parts, it's gonna be bouncing up and down, hitting on other bits of mechanical stuff, whether it's the engine or the casing or anything else, and just generally making a bit of a sloppy noise, like as if your kind of tappets are gone or something similar to that. Um, I didn't have any of that either because it had only just stretched um, maybe a centimeter over the entire length of the chain, then pff, you're just not gonna hear it really. So as my car had only done 55k at the time and when I brought it, it had a full service history, more on that later, I kind of suspected that it wasn't the chain and I went down the most easiest route to find the main cause of the problem and obviously the most cheapest route. You gotta think of is what's controlling the cam motion and the crank and that's obviously on the VVTI system. You gotta look at the oil, you know, if, if the oil isn't good and, and clean um, and hasn't had regular changes then where the the solenoid would feed oil pressure into the cam to make it then turn a degree or two um, out of phase or in phase that then could relate to a problem and if your oil's not clean and if your solenoid is not working properly that can cause a bit of a delay and then by also doing that you might be stretching the chain as well, maybe. I do my own oil check and I checked my own oil, changed the filter, literally probably about three, four months before this. I know it might sound like a coincidence, but I'm a bit anal on checking my oil procedures and everything. The oil that goes into it is good. And the replacement of parts like your sump washer, I'm one of these that don't like just to do it up to yay tight. I need to know the exact torque that I'm tying it up to. 
I really didn't think it was that. So the second thing is obviously gonna be the electrics. Now the electrics are quite easy to check for you, checking for continuity, checking for good connection. Is there any moisture in the cables or in, in the connectors? You know, are, are they sort of like making good connection? Is there any signs of any shortages? Not that you would probably get that from the small amount of voltage that is being transferred, but you know, you gotta be thinking about these sort of things they all appear good i pulled out the sensors i gave him a clean i looked inside so you have a reluctor ring that goes around like that lots of little little indentations on some and then when that indentation stop for a little period then your ray form will look like this so what is causing that sort of sensor to possibly pick up a wrong sort of reading. It could be that the reluctor ring or the tone ring, depending where you are and where you're living, has been compromised somehow. So it's uh, slipped, twisted, bent, dirty. So I went, I went through, checked all them. Checked the cam sensor and the crank sensor and the rings relating to it. They looked all good. I took, checked the resistance on the sensors. I'll put a link down to this guy here. He goes in there like a thousand times better than what I could do it. He is ratchets and wenches, believe it or not. But go and check him out. Like him, subscribe him. He's cool. Now, obviously, when I was checking for the VVTI system and the solenoid, I took that out, gave it a clean. I also then um, tested the solenoid on my bench power supply unit to make sure it's clicking and doing the kind of things that it should have done, and that was all okay. So, my uh, cam sensor was only about eight quid, brand name, 48 quid. I thought I might as well buy it just in case it was something else that was gone wrong with it. Peace of mind, bolted that in, still a problem. Before I bought the car, they, um, changed the clutch on it so they could have lifted the engine somehow unscrewed it and bolted it wrong and it could have um, caused a bit of chafing going on in the wiring that's another reason to look at the wiring and the sensor they could have knocked it somehow um, but uh, it that was all okay they apparently done the job completely fine so really maybe i should have just got the oscilloscope out and uh probed it in and had a good old look at it you know that means getting the laptop set up and all that sort of thing and i kind of took a bit more of the hands-on approach and just check the basics first rather than plugging in the oscilloscope which probably next time i probably would do the oscilloscope thing first other things that could be wrong other you know other, other causes that could have could have caused it could have been the the ecu itself i didn't really have the equipment to test the ecu it had been working fine up until now but that's also a possibility it could actually be the ecu that's uh, shafted in some way um, I kind of smelt it and felt for any damp or anything or any gunk coming out of it and um, sometimes if a diode's gone or something like that you can smell or the resistor's gone you can smell like that electrical burning smell so it's always good to like use your senses have a little feel and a little touch and a little smell and a little whiff and you know lick it if you have to um, but no yeah so so now it's time to break open the scope and put it actually on the scope and obviously because this is a cam and crank sash sensor issue the two have to link up so obviously you're going to need at least a two channel scope to do this so i would advise buying a pico scope purely because of the holy grail of the known good sensor library database that it has um so you could probably put in a car anybody that's ever done a reading on a pico scope i think it somehow gets uploaded up to the mothership so you could put on there i'm looking for a good known crank camshaft correlation waveform and it would then throw one back at you and if yours was any different than that then you'd obviously know that that's the issue i being me went for a hand tech version that had eight channels now i'm probably ever in my situation never ever going to need eight channels maybe four very at the very most but two i would say you know get get the pico scope for sure so after a little research on the uh big old wide internet rep i managed to find a good known waveform reading sensor output that i needed to go by at first looking at it it didn't look much different if you look closely at the top and the bottom one you can actually see that one is just a very little bit slightly behind and it's all about counting the ups and the downs when this one's going one two three four and this one's in bomb you were one two three four four one two three four but if it's like one two three four one two three four and it's all out of shot then you know it's not working so after i noticed that it appeared that it was stretched um i kind of was a bit suspect of it like because these things should last for the whole entire vehicle's lifetime like that's what they say there's no real maintenance procedure in anything like a haynes manual they should last the lifetime of the car 
Now, looking back at my service history, I was kind of thinking, well, that's okay. I can go back into Toyota and say, well, look, this is supposed to last a lifetime of the car, but obviously it hasn't. Looking back at my service history, the lane that had it before me, and I should have picked up on this when buying it, got the vehicle changed within the mile range, not the year. So like every year you should have, I think it says a year or 12,000 miles, you should have your oil and your filter chain. It's a VVTI system. There's some very small channels that the oil has to run around to make everything change into its different phases when it's required to do so. If you've got a bit of dirty oil or the oil's not up to spec, it could possibly take a bit of wear and tear on it. And also the chain is also lubricated by the oil that's spinning around in the engine as well. So it's a bit of a needs to be done situation, whether it's gone past its 12K or whether it's done its year, it needs to be changed yearly. The lane deal obviously changed it per miles rather than per year. So really I didn't have a leg to stand on going back to Toyota and saying, look guys, your car, machine, whatever, hasn't worked. Luckily, Toyota are really nice people and they give you the same data that their mechanics or technicians would have to fix this issue. And uh, I don't know how much it is. I'll put a link and I'll show you a little bit on screen now of how to get through to it. To me, that's really good. Things like Renault and Citroen and other car manufacturers, they keep all that sort of to themselves and you have to rely on eBay brought bootlegged, sort of copied, pirated stuff to get that detail from. Now, because Toyota are like this, I possibly could take some of those images that I downloaded and share them with you, but I'm not gonna do that because I respect that Toyota has done this and I want to keep the peace, so to speak. So I will draw certain things like the gasket on the thing it needs to be done up in certain times. Now I'm not going to show you that picture. I'll draw you that picture. And that's good. That's good. So you can get on there. You can pay what for an hour. I think I paid maybe six, seven quid and you can download the stuff that's 10 times better than the Haynes manual. The other thing it does is it tells you the TSBs, um, the technical service bulletins that comes out. And on one of those TSBs, it says that the chain is a weak link. Get it? Weak link. So yeah, it was a faulty chain. I looked at Catcar, Catcar's great. Putting your stuff on Catcar and um, phoned up Toyota and said, I need this part here, which was the chain number they gave me. And they said, whoa, actually um, it's changed product code. So when Googling for these things, it will say that um, the P0016 code really shouldn't be drove anymore once it pings up. Because obviously if the chain snaps or it's slightly out of time, then the piston could come up and hit the valve and kaboom. But me, didn't have any problems starting it up or anything like that. Really no performance issues. Didn't sound too bad. Maybe a bit of rough idling. Kind of took the chances and thought it's not that bad. I, done a compression test and then when I come to redo the compression test which is kind of missing the it was overexposed when I've done it basically so you can't really see much but it's pretty much exactly the same so what this was telling me is that the engine kind of is uh, running on reasonably good compression even if it the, the dials was 10% out 20% out it was really is running on good compression you know so that it wasn't that far out that I was going to get like any piston slap or anything from the valve train, which is good. So I chosen to drive it around until I got the bits, got the motivation to do it myself. Now timing chains, I've always heard are 10 times harder than timing belts. And while that is technically false, it's got its own complications. So a timing chain will often be shrouded in oil. So you've got that perfect gasket seal, which again, you need to buy the gasket sealer to go around. A belt tends to not be, but I've got sort of a few scars from trying to get that belt up and over cam, even without the tension pulley on. And that's another thing that could have been it with the chain, where it could have been a tension pulley system. And again, you wouldn't know that until you've took it all apart because it's built into the unit where the chain is accessed anyway. So that you replace with a brand new one when you're doing it. Do your timing chain tensioner, do your time and chain guides. They looked all pretty, quite cool when I took mine out, but just buy the whole lot, do it, because you don't want to do it again. The chain was very quite straightforward and simple. Um, 
you've got more of a, a gasket seal going around between the engine and, and the cover. That's because chain is obviously soaked in oil as it's spinning around where a belt isn't. I would possibly want to do a chain more than what I would want to do a belt. Again, if I had a choice, if somebody said to me, right, I've got this Yaris here, or I've got my Megane, what would I prefer to do? I'd prefer to do the Yaris purely because it's a lot easier to work on. Like just little things like 10 mil socket to pretty much take everything off the engine where with the Megane you've got to use a bit of torque you've got to use a socket different size socket and then something else the Megane also on the crank pulley had kind of like one of these weird sort of setups where it wasn't keyed in you had to take it apart and know the position of the crank and top dead ends and maybe something else and and go from there where this it's got a little keyway so much easier so much I, I, I found it so much easier I kind of measure things on a bit of a fuck yeah sort of moment and and that's kind of like um when you come to a hard bit and you do it and you're just like fuck yeah and you do that little funky dance on the driveway that's how i measure how difficult things are and this was i think it was a free fuck yes at the end of the day first one i think was actually actually getting off the i think it might have been the water pump a couple of screws on there a couple of bolts on there sort of like you have to hold one to hold it from stopping spinning and then you've got to turn it with another and they, they start rounding and i need to buy a precision sort of spanner just to get that to undo that was one i think and the second one was actually putting on the gasket on the side of the timing chain cover to the engine to make sure that was mounted that was another moment that I was kind of running that around and it's kind of one of those situations without the engine out you've got to kind of focus in push in and around and get it in without it splodging over the side and causing crap to go everywhere where you didn't want it to go because obviously then that crap's going to go inside and then when they find little sort of things of the fucking engine and block up oil I was tightening up the actual cam onto the cam shaft and I think I over tightened one of them bolts and put too much torque in it I think I mismeasured the actual torque setting and it rounded off and poof, broke inside luckily I could just get a little um, hammer and just tap around it and back it out unscrew it went down to the local machine shop guy place that sells nuts and bolts and everything fantastic and said to him have you got any of these and he said yeah sure five quid done dusted and i think that was the only three moments i had that i was just like fuck and then done it and everything was like boogie on so whilst everything was cool and okay and i was driving around i kind of in between that had to have an mot done now in england now if your mill light is on when you have an mot done it's uh, an instant failure because it could be something like emissions it could be this could be that and it could be polluting the atmosphere and you know killing stuff which i'm cool with but you know this really wasn't much of an issue it wasn't going to be killing anything really at all so luckily it was a two stage trigger so with this little bad boy bluetooth and i think this is on bluetooth bluetooth 5 or something or 4 or 5 whatever it is it's got a good range to it so i had this plugged into the um obd to uh, 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 obd port had that plugged in and i sat whilst my car was being amputated in the little rating area and i sat by the window and i could see the guy every time he started up the engine i'd be like right on here we set and then what that would do is because obviously it takes two to time so like if it wasn't i might have better get in there quick enough just to reset it but because it's a two time thing like every time he turned it on i was just like mm, yeah whatever so the second time we went to turn on the ignition it would be triggering it for its first time it's kind of as a bit naughty of me i know bit wrong bit naughty but what else am i supposed to do so later on now we're going to go into part two um hopefully this could be out before christmas if not hope everyone's staying safe and having a good christmas and um part two is just going to be pretty much flying through it and um yeah getting it done really getting it done i feel free i run out